Hi friends, welcome to Azure Content. This is part 23 in Azure Data Factory Real-Time Scenarios Playlist. In this video, we are going to learn how to log pipeline execution details in Azure Data Factory. So let's move ahead. So I have a pipeline in my ADF which is called PL underscore master pipeline. So this pipeline basically is calling another child pipeline using execute pipeline activity inside for each. Okay. So I'm not going much into details what this pipeline is doing, but for this pipeline, I want to log pipeline execution details. That is pipeline name, pipeline run ID, pipeline trigger time, pipeline trigger type and pipeline execution time in seconds. So all these values should be coming in my SQL table. So as you can see, this is how my expected output is looking like. Okay. So whenever my pipeline runs, it should have one insertion in the table with all these details okay so it should log the pipeline name as pl underscore master pipeline and it should fetch the pipeline run id and log it here in the second column and then this trigger time when the pipeline is triggered that time should also be logged then the pipeline trigger type which means the pipeline has been executed manually or by trigger so that should also be logged here and then pipeline execution time in seconds so how much time this pipeline is taking overall to successfully complete the execution so all these details i want to log in my sql table so let's see everything in practical let me go to adf pipeline so here is my pipeline which is pl underscore master pipeline and this pipeline is calling another pipeline let me open that and show you so this is the child pipeline which is trying to copy the data so i want to get all the details of this master pipeline and log it in my SQL table. So let me create a SQL table to log all these details. So create table, let me name it as pipeline run status. Okay. So first of all, I want to have an ID column which will hold the integer value for each of the records. And let me make it as an identity column so that for each of the records that we are going to insert, it will automatically generate the uh, ID value. Okay. So the seed and increment will be one and one. So for each of the records, it will generate the value as one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay. Because we have given the start value as one and the increment is also one. Okay. So it will add one for each of the rows. And then we need to log pipeline name. Let me write PL underscore name. And let me give the data type as varchar 50. And then let me have a column for pipeline run id so pl underscore run id again var char let me give the number of characters as 100 and then trigger time so it will be a date time column let me give pl underscore trigger time and let me give the data type as date time again we need to have trigger type so pl underscore trigger type and this will be varchar let me give 20 and then pipeline execution time so let me give pl underscore execution time in seconds we want to have this value in seconds okay so this one we can have it as an int but let me give varchar then so we are good let me execute it and let me create this table. Yeah, so the table is created. Let me check. So let's start from pipeline run status. Yeah, so now the table exists. We just need to insert the values during the runtime. So let me go to ADF portal again. So in order to log the details of this pipeline, we need to run SQL query to insert values into this table. So to do that, we can use either lookup activity or we can use script activity or we can create a stored procedure and we can run a stored procedure activity as well okay so for now let me go ahead with script activity let me drag it here after the pipeline and let me connect with for each activity and here in the script activity let me select the linked service for my sql table okay so if i show you the details it has the server name database name and my authentication credentials let me test connection for you yeah so connection is successful 
So now here we have to write the script, but since we have to write the insert statement, as you can see, if you need to update, insert or delete, we need to use non-query option. So let me select this and let me click on this add dynamic content. So let me write insert into the table name is pipeline run status. And let me give the values. So the first column is ID. For that, we don't need to insert anything explicitly because it is an identity column. So we will skip that. The next thing is pipeline name. Okay. So here in the system variable, we will get all the details that we want. Okay. So we need to have the pipeline name. Okay. So I will select this pipeline name option. So since this column is varchar type, that means it will hold the string value. So we need to give single quotes. Let me try to zoom in a bit. And then we need to give string interpolation for that. Let me use at the rate and then curly braces. Okay. And within that, we will write this expression. So I'm just simply going to click it and it is generating this expression pipeline dot pipeline. So this will give the pipeline name. And then the next column is pipeline run ID. So to hold that, let me again give single quotes and then string interpolation at the rate and then curly braces. And within this, I will select run ID. Let me search for pipeline run ID. So I selected that and it generated the expression here. And after that, the next column is trigger time. Okay. So for third column, let me give comma again, single quotes at the rate curly braces. And within this, let me search for trigger time. And here it is. So let me click on this and it generated the expression. So this will give a timestamp value. And since this column is a date time column, we need to convert this into proper date time format. So for doing that, let me use format date time function. Let me search for that format date time. Yeah. So here, let me use this and let me remove the closing bracket from here and let me put it here. And before this, we need to give the format in which we want the output. Okay. So here we will give yyyy hyphen mm then dd then hh mm ss for year, month, date, hour, minute and second. So we are good with trigger time. Now let's see what is the next column we are expecting. So after trigger time, we need to have trigger type. Okay. So for that, let me again give single quotes, string interpolation. And here we need to select, let me go to system variable and let me see trigger type. So here it is. Let me select that and we are good. Let me again give comma and let's look for the next uh, column. So we need to log pipeline execution time in seconds. So if we search here anything related to pipeline execution time, let's check. So we have pipeline trigger time, but nowhere we have the execution time, which means how much time this pipeline is taking to actually complete its execution. So in system variables, we do not have any function which will return the pipeline execution time. So for now, let me just hard code this value as 100 seconds. And let me click on OK. So in order to get the pipeline execution time, what we need to do as a workaround is we need to create two variables. Let me create two variables. One will hold the start time for this pipeline and the other will hold the end time for the pipeline. OK, and let me use two set variable activities, one for the start time and other for the end time. So the first one will be at the start of the pipeline execution and the end time will be just before the logging activity. Okay. So let me add it here after forage because this is where the pipeline will be completely executed. And then we are going to fetch the pipeline end time and the difference between these two will give us the pipeline execution time. Okay. So let me connect these two and the value that we are going to provide here will be current timestamp. So for that, let me use UTC now function. So this will give us the current timestamp as a string. So let me select that. And here again in the end time, we will use the same expression for end time. That is UTC now. Let me go to the functions and let me select UTC now function. 
So now the only thing remaining is we need to get the difference between end time and start time. So here, so let me remove this hard coded value. So since this is a SQL query, which is going to run in our database, so we can use SQL functions. Okay. So let me use date diff function, which is a SQL function where we need to provide three parameters. The first one is the interval to calculate the difference. So here we will give second as the interval and then the two values that needs to be subtracted are start time and then end time. So let me give string interpolation by giving at the rate and curly braces. Similarly for this one, as well as let me give the single quotes. Similarly for this one, the start quote and the end quote. Let me remove the extra quote. So we are good. Let me click on OK. And now let me debug the pipeline. And we are expecting that it will log the correct details for this table. So we are going to execute it once this uh, pipeline execution will be completed. So as you can see, the first thing that this pipeline is doing is fetching the start time. So this is the start time, okay, which is nothing but the current timestamp. And then it is running the pipeline inside this for each, it will execute the child pipeline. So first iteration of the child pipeline is going in progress. So you can see four iterations of execute pipeline activity has been completed and it is giving the duration here. And if we see the for each activity duration, it is nothing but the sum of all these four uh, durations, okay, which is the child pipeline execution duration. And then end time is fetched here using UTC now. And this script activity is also successfully completed, which is actually generating this insert script. Okay. So you can see it has fetched the value from the pipeline wherever we had given the expression. So here it was pipeline run ID. So it has fetched the ID. Let me check that. So you can see B5E3. So here also it is B5E3. So it is correctly fetching the data and this is the pipeline trigger time and this is the trigger type manually we have run this pipeline so it is giving manual and then this is the expression it has formulated for difference between start time and end time so now the execution is completed let's check in the table what is the value so i have run the query so you can see it has generated id as one because we have given this as the identity column we have not explicitly given any value in the insert script okay and then pipeline name is pl underscore master pipeline which is correct pipeline run id is also correct as we have seen and pipeline trigger time is coming in utc which is fine for me it is showing in ist and pipeline trigger type is manual as we have manually run this pipeline and then execution time is 120 seconds okay so since it is coming in seconds it can be little bit up and down so now whenever we will be executing this pipeline, it is going to insert a new record with the current pipeline run ID and with all these details. Okay. So this time, let me publish this change and let me try to trigger and we will see that the trigger type should be changed to trigger instead of manual. Okay. So now let me run the same pipeline using trigger mode so that we can see this trigger type should be changed from manual to trigger. Okay. So for that, let me publish this changes. So we need to create a new trigger which will be attached to this pipeline. Okay. So publishing has been completed. So if I hit on this trigger now, it will still be a manual execution. So what we will do is we will create a new trigger. So I will create a new schedule trigger and let me select the time zone as IST and the schedule date time will be current time that is 452. Okay. So 4.52 is the current time. Let me give it as 4.55. And let me hit on OK. So let me publish this trigger as well. So let me hit on publish. So publishing is in progress. Let's wait. Yeah, so trigger has been published. So now we are expecting within two minutes, it will start a new execution. Let me go to triggers run. So currently you can see there is no execution details. 
let's wait for some more time and we will hit on refresh okay so now let me hit on refresh and let's check if execution is going on so you can see at 4 55 pm this trigger got executed let me let me click on this pipeline option and let's check the details so it is currently in progress let's wait So pipeline execution is completed within 37 seconds as you can see. Let me again go to the table and let's see if the second record is inserted or not. So now you can see the trigger type is scheduled trigger and the execution time is relatively very less because of trigger run. Okay. And pipeline run ID let's check if it is valid. So you can see C8 and it ends with 30. So it starts with C8 and ends with 30. So we are good. And if we validate, it actually took 33 seconds or so. If you see, the start time is 4.55.02 and the end time is 4.55.36. So it actually took somewhere around 30 seconds. As all the execute pipeline activity was going in parallel. Okay. In debug run, it was not so. It was running one by one. So that is the reason it took more time in debug run. Okay. So we are good. Let me go back to the presentation. So we have successfully logged all the execution details in the SQL table. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you like the content. Please hit on like button and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. Thank you.